What's going down guys? In this tutorial, uh, you will learn how to create multiple columns for the content on your website using floating divs, which requires the use of CSS. Um, this is the best way and the most professional way um, to create multiple columns on a web page. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight to it. So, as you can see, I've already created some basic content um, on this web page okay um, for this tutorial now your web page may look something like this or it probably will look a lot more advanced than this this is very basic um, but as you can see we've got some news bulletins underneath the news heading and we've got a welcome paragraph underneath the welcome heading <clears throat> now obviously these would look much better if they were in separate columns okay so that's what we're going to be achieving in this tutorial we're going to be moving them into two separate columns now as you can see I've created a new folder on my desktop for my website um, just called multiple columns tutorial and as you can see I've got my index.html file and I've got a folder called CSS and in here I have my CSS file which is called style.css <clears throat> so this is my code for index.html so you can see I've typed up the bare bones of a HTML document. You can see that I've added a title to my web page, just called Multiple Columns, because that's what this tutorial is going to be about. Um, and you can see I've um, created a link, an external link to my CSS file. And I've then added a main a div class called Main Container. And in here I've got my news heading. I've got my unordered list of my news bulletins and then I've got another heading that says welcome and then I've got my paragraph okay so what we can do now is this is where we are going to put them into two separate columns we're going to have the news on the left in the left column and the main content on the right column because I think that would look best so underneath um, where we've opened the main container div class we're going to create a new div class called main container but then this time it's going to say inner left so main container inner left and underneath the unordered list where it ends we're going to close the div so you can indent that as well and as you can see that all that content now is within main container inner left then we're going to do the same for main container inner right okay um so obviously this is going to be the right column and then obviously close that div off as well um, at the end of the content and indent that as well so we've got main container in a left and we've got main container in a right and that's what we're going to be targeting um, in our CSS file to uh, put them into columns basically so that's all we need to add in to our HTML file, file, save. You'll see when we go back to the browser and press refresh, nothing's happened at the moment because we haven't added the styling. But <clears throat> the news uh, section and the welcome section are now in two separate divs within the whole main container. Okay. So you can, this is my CSS file. You can see I've already created and added in some CSS styling for the body, the main container the h2 tag, the paragraph tag, the unordered list tag and the list tag um, so you can see here before we start uh, moving on to the inner left and inner right containers that for the main container I've set the width to 860 pixels and that's because we have a padding of 20 pixels all round so obviously 20 plus 20 plus 860 is 900 <coughs> so I made so because I wanted the whole width to be 900 pixels of the main container, I had to take off 40 pixels for the padding. So now we're going to um, add the new styling. Uh, sorry, add a new style for main container in a left and main container in a right. So in main container in a left, <clears throat> we're first of all going to add a width um, of 430 pixels. And the reason for that is because that's exactly half of 860 pixels, which is the current width of uh, 
of the inner um, main container minus the padding of course so then in main container in the right we're also going to add a width of 430 pixels now what that does is um, that's basically split into half now okay so the left column and the right column will be exactly half of uh, the main container so we're going to change that so for the left container uh, sorry yeah so for the left column we want it to be 230 the right column we want it to be 630 so I've minus 200 off the left plus 200 on the right because <clears throat> we don't want it to be half and half so then the code that really does make the difference is the float so we're going to add a float of left to the main container in the left and a floor of right to main container in a right then when we file save and refresh in our browser you can see that we now have two columns we have successfully created two columns okay 230 pixels for the news column and 630 pixels for the main content of that web page okay we zoom out you can see that a bit better so we now have two columns and you can keep doing this and you can actually create as many columns as you want on your web page but I'm just creating two for this tutorial and um, just to keep it simple and just to show you how it's done so now so that we can see these columns a bit clearer we're going to add a border of one pixel dashed and black within main container in a right okay um, but because we've added a one pixel border to the left we need to minus one pixel off the width otherwise it won't work so we need to make that 629 pixels file save and refresh in the browser and you'll now see that we have a dashed border to the left of the right hand column um, but obviously we can't see that very clearly so what we can do is we can add a little bit of padding in main container in a right underneath the border left Add a padding of 0 pixels, 20 pixels, 0 pixels, 20 pixels. And actually, no, that's not right. We don't need a padding on the right hand side, just on the left hand side. So it needs to be 0, 0, 0, 20. Because we've already got 20 pixels padding on the right from the main container styling. We don't need any more padding there. Then in main container in the left, we'll also add some padding on the right this time of 20 pixels. We won't be able to see it um, from this tutorial, um, but if you add content that filled the whole of that column, you would be able to see that padding has been added there, and the content doesn't go right up to the border, which is not what you want. And we've got to make sure that we change the widths as well. So we need to minus 20 pixels on main container in a right width, and minus 20 pixels on main container in a left width. Okay. So obviously, you can see now that it is taking shape. And we can clearly see the two individual columns. Um, so yeah, so now if we just remove the min height uh, property on the main container, and we refresh in the browser, you will see that this happens, and that's because we've used a float. So the way to avoid this is in the in the main container styling, we had an overflow of hidden file, save, and then when we refresh in the browser, you will see that that no longer happens. The main container stretches out um, to cover the float content, the content that's been floated on the left and right. Um, so if we go back into index.html, we can add in now um, just a few line breaks and a couple of paragraph tags just add a bit more content and you can see um, that no matter how much content we have in there now the main container will stretch out um, and will automatically um, have a height equal to the height of that um, of those float divs those float classes so that's just about it then for this tutorial guys um, so as you can see, it was quite simple to do, not difficult at all to create multiple columns, and uh, there you have it. That's how you create multiple columns on on any, on any web page.
So yeah, that's it for this tutorial then guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did find it useful and you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up to show your appreciation because it really helps me out. Um, leave any comments in the comment section below and leave any suggestions for future tutorials in the comment section below because I'm open to all suggestions. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified as and when I upload new tutorials in the future. And it really does help me out by you subscribing, it really does show your support and helps me out. So as always guys, thanks for watching and more tutorials coming very soon.